Hi guys and welcome to another Fellamass video, this one on stoke graphs. Yes, how exciting. Building on my previous video uh, relating to, uh, what do we call it, line segment graphs. Yes, if you haven't already watched that video, head over to mathguru.com, which is my website where all these videos are linked by textbooks and by chapters and with downloadable notes and they are there for you, absolutely free to sign up. If you're watching through YouTube, if you could do me the honor please of subscribing, it just lets me know that you're watching because I am never going to be rich and I am certainly never going to be famous because uh, who wants to watch maths videos? I know, go figure. I here to try and make them make sense in the best possible way because maths doesn't have to be boring and it sure as hell can be a lot more fun than it actually is. So I'm Darren, let's make a start. What is the learning objective by the end of this lesson? It's good to know, isn't it? Understand what a step graph is, know how to construct them and importantly know how to read them. And step graphs are funky little things, right? Oh, love them because uh, they're interesting. Now, okay, in the previous video, as I said here, this was called a line segment graph. Why? Because it's a graph of what is made up of line segments. Yes, so you've got a straight line here and a straight line and a straight line and a straight line and a straight line and they're all joined together in beautiful ways so that we can see some beautiful pattern and life is good. Do all graphs look like that? No, not really. This is probably my subscribers. No, in fact, my subscribers over time seem to do this. I think people just get bored of my videos. It's just too much. Oh, if only people out there could actually like my videos. Um, but the basic definition was made up and the, the point here was they all of these line segments sort of met each other so they all joined each other there were axes and there were labels of axes and all this type of stuff so how is it much different from a step graph well as you can see behind me here is a step graph now I don't know about you but steps I go up or I go down and steps are fairly flat although not in my house in university true story in my house in university uh, which we had to sort of rent um, it was university house the stairs actually went like that my mum after the first time of being in the house wouldn't come back in it at all and unfortunately my room was upstairs because uh, it was a health hazard it was dangerous there were mornings I would walk down these stairs and well walk more sort of slid anyway so uh, <laughs> university life god do I miss it so a step graph is, there are horizontal sections that basically stand for something. If we look here, we've got this M with a brackets in G. Now I'm going to tell you now that that M stands for mass in grams. So we're obviously weighing something and notice the grams are in brackets. It's giving us our units. And this C is actually cost and that is a dollar symbol, right? So we are obviously measuring or weighing something and relating some sort of a cost to it. As it turns out, it's sending stuff overseas, All right? So, um, anything you notice about this graph? Well, let's have a look. Our graph starts at zero. Now, again, not all graphs have to start at zero. We notice that all of the values go up in an even way. There are two spaces between each of my values. That's incredibly important. And in this situation, two spaces between each of my values doesn't have to always be the same for horizontal or vertical graphs. But on the whole. The way this graph is set up is lovely. But I suppose the question is, what on earth is with these circles at the end of the lines? Do you notice we've got a colored in circle? Well, rough, let's try that one again. We've got an open circle, that's what it's called, and a colored in circle, an open circle, and a colored in circle, an open, and a colored in, and open, and a colored in. So each one of these line sections has a circle on the end. Why? Well, if we look at 100 milligrams, or 100 grams, and let's go up, what do we notice? Well, we notice that there are two lines which effectively start or end at 100. Yes, do you notice that? This line here seems to have a point that starts at 100, and this point here has, or that line there has a point that ends at 100. So by looking at this graph, what actually that's trying to suggest, if I didn't have those circles on it, that if I walked into the post office with a package that was 100 grams, they would charge me both two and $2.5. Two or $2.50, that doesn't make any sense. How, with it being 100 milligrams, they're gonna charge me two things. So believe it or not, we use this idea of dots to say, hey, this is the cost, and not this one. So whenever I have a closed circle, that is the cost. So in that situation, if I had 100 grams, I would only be charged the $2, not $2.50, because that open circle says, yeah, nah, not here. 
not here. If my graph, if my package was 101 grams, then I start being charged $2.50 all the way up to this here, which is what, 250 grams. So 250 grams up to and including that value, I'll pay $2.50. I won't be paying $4. So when you draw these step line graphs, you must make sure that you put the open and close circles in the right places. But I suppose the question is, how do you know where they are? Well, hold on, graph hopper. We will wait. Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. Anyway, here's another example of a step graph. What have we got here? We've got a year and we've got an amount in dollars. So again, what do we notice? Now, this graph seemingly starts, well, there's no zero here. Why is there no zero? Well, we can see that actually my graph is starting at $10,000. And in the core module on data analysis, you will already have been dealing with graphs that you can have breaks and bits and pieces in it. So we don't have to start at zero. Years, obviously we have started at zero, but we notice now that my amounts go up in $1,000 increments, my years go up in ones, and we still have these steps. Do I have my open and closed circle? I have an open circle here and a closed circle here, which means that if we had four years and I'm looking for an amount, I know exactly which part of that line I am going to deal with. Yay, this is very exciting. What could this be? My income from my YouTube channel? <laughs> no. Haven't even reached 4,000 hours of viewing, never gonna happen. Okay, so how to draw step graphs. Let's go back to the actual question that the Cambridge Further Mass textbook gave us, and it was this one here. So as I said, it was a mass and cost of sending something. Where are the important words here? As I say, it is the word up to. So if we look at over 250 grams, up to 500 grams, the language here is important because if it's up to, it means it includes. If it's over, it means it doesn't include. So I suppose the question is now, well, can I use this information and draw the graph? Well, it's thought of, but once again, maths is gonna try and trick you because lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna come up with a cost function. <gasps> what does it mean by a cost function? Now again, it's there to try and trick you. And being sneaky, they're gonna ask me for this cost function. Now, interestingly, a cost function is relatively easy to do. It's fairly formulaic, it has the same idea. And I'm gonna show you how to draw one. For the first thing is, it has this letter C, right? So C equals, standing for cost, if that's my formula. If they choose cost to begin with F, you'll have F equals. Then we draw a set of these curly brackets. All right, so that looks like a face, uh, but anyway, uh, nice go. Now I tend to draw these last because I can never make them match the right way, but what happens now? Well, the first thing we do is we put all of the costs here. So I'm gonna put 1.20 there. Why on earth am I putting 1.20? Because that's my first cost. So trying to draw this cost function, I do it in order. The next thing I have to do is a comma, and then I put M is less than or equal to 50. Why on earth have I got less than or equal to 50? Because, it told me here, up to 50 grams means it's got to include 50 grams. So my mass, if it's less than or equal to 50, is the same way as saying up to 50 grams. Easy, thank you very much. My next cost is $2, 2.00. I have to write it with the sense, why? Because it's money, and money has two decimal places. Do my comma. Oh, now what do we do? So it's got to be over 50 grams. So we write 50 is greater than or is less than or equal to M, which is less than or equal to 100. Now, where do we get the 50 and the 100 from? The 50 and the 100 came from there. It's got to have a value of M between those. So that's why we write between. And now we just have our inequality signs because it's got to be over 50 grams. It's just that sign. It doesn't have the little equal sign but when it includes or up to 100 grams, it has to have the equal sign as well. So do you see how to do the next one? Well, we now know it's 2.50 comma, I've got 100 to 250, so that's gonna be 100, that's gonna be 250, my M is gonna be in the middle, so over 100 grams has to be that one, up to, which includes the equal sign, has to be that one, and the last one then is 4.00, and what we've got over 250 grams, 500 grams, M, and lo and behold, that is my cost function. Now do you see why I don't normally draw those first? Because now it doesn't look uh, particularly good at all. And now there's my cost function. 
So we haven't even drawn a step graph yet. Suddenly, for some strange reason, they want me to do algebra in this question. Okay. So now, having written the cost function, we can draw or sketch the function. Now, I'm going to do this really badly because I don't have a set of axes, but we know that our value goes up to 500 grams. So I am going to do zero here. I'm going to do 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. You've got a square paper, hopefully, so you can draw this accurately and you're advised to write it accurately. Now, what are my costs? Well, my highest cost is $4. And so I'm going to go $1, $2, $3, and $4. I'm going to write cost here and in brackets dollars. And I'm going to write here mass in grams. Now, I know I've already got the graph, but again, just showing you how I draw it. Up to 50 grams is $1.20. So I'm now going to draw a horizontal line there and up to 50 grams. So I know, uh, sorry, up to 50 grams, that's too long. So up to 50 grams is here. So I do a short line there, it's going to have a closed circle there and an open circle there because it's going to include the 50 grams. 50 to 100 grams is going to give me $2. So 50 to 100 grams is $2. So again, including and open circle. So that's my 50 grams there. What else have I got? 100 to 250 is $2.50. So 100 to 250 is there. I've done two dots, do a line. That's a closed circle. There is an open circle. And then 250 to 500 is $4. So all the way up to 500, which gives me my line here. Oops, that's a terrible, don't ever do what I've just done there. Don't have the graph with that little flick in it. You've got rulers. And there we go. There is my step line graph. All right, here's another question. Sophie invests $10,000, uh, for which interest will be 12% per annum. The interest is calculated at the end of each year and added to the amount invested. $10,000 is invested. Now, obviously, in this situation, if you needed to, you could actually bail that information into your calculator because you've already done the financial math module. And if you haven't, get over there and do the financial math module. It's awesome. The amount of money she has in account in the first five years is shown. Sketch the graph of the amount in the account against the year. Okay, so again, amount against the year. So in this situation, because my start amount is 10,000 and my end amount is 15,735, I'm going to start here at 10,000 and then 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000, 15,000, and 16,000. Yep, so that's now what do we say amount? Don't forget to label the axes in dollars. And then what do we have on the bottom? Year. So one, two, three, four, and five years. One, two, three, four, and five. So zero to one, $10,000, right? So between zero and one is $10,000 which means in this situation, my closed circle is actually going to be the end and my open circle is going to be there. Why? Because at the end of the year, she's got some interest paid to her, which is why there's one to two. So at the start of that year, okay, at the start of the first year, she's got $11,200. So there's say $11,200 to two years. So I've got a closed circle and an open circle because at the end of the year, she's actually going to be paid some interest. She's going to have more in there. So again, between two and three years, she's got $12,000. 500. So close circle, open circle. Between three and four is 14,000, just above 14,000. Let's do that. So again, uh, close circle and open circle. Oh, he said not doing an open circle in any way, shape, or form. Open circle. And then we've got um, close circle and open circle. And there we have our step line graph, which again, you will do much, much better. Guys, that is the end of this lesson. Step line graphs now. Open circle, closed circles. Make sure you get those the right way around. But I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you are staying safe. If you can, sign up to my YouTube channel. Greatly appreciated. Head over to mathsguru.com. Videos are all over there for you and the link is behind me. Um, but otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care of yourself and I'll see you again soon. Bye.